Hey guys, it's Colin from the Dynamic Beaver with part two of setting up the Beaver Builder theme. In today's video, we're going to go over the header section and do that in a lot more detail, show you all the options available. But first of all, uh, this was the ugly, ugly theme that we were left with at the end of last video. So what I want to do is uh, I want to demonstrate how we can reset all our settings and get rid of something that's ugly like this. Imagine having a website like this. God, it would be really, really boring. OK, so what we would do is go to our dashboard, go to appearance, and then we'll click on theme settings. This will take us by default into the skin options of the Beaver Build theme settings. And right now we were on the, this one here, but we've modified it enough that it just looks nothing like that. Um, it's good in a way it shows you, you know, the potential to change the theme. But uh, we want to get rid of that really boring one, get back to something to start off with. So this is how we can reset everything. So all I really got to do is just choose any other skin and save the settings and once I've done that, I can go back to skins and then select this one again, okay, and save settings. Now, if we go back to our front page again, refresh it, you'll see that we'll be back to normal. There we go. We've got some kind of clean theme going here now. All right, so I just want to get rid of this um, calendar widget that we put in in video one and in part one of that uh, video, of this video series. So I'm just going to go to widgets and I'm going to go, it was in column two, if I remember correctly. There we go. I'm just going to delete that. We can grab a calendar anytime we want, so we don't have to worry about dragging it over to the inactive widgets. And if we go back to our home page now, or our front page, and refresh that, there we go. We've got a footer back into the play there. So let's talk about the header. Okay, so when it comes to designing your, your website, we need to look at... Uh, what we're going to do with the header now as you can see we have a we have a navigation or menu on the right hand side over here right now but we might want to put that up here in the above that in the top bar that's what it's called in the beaver builder theme or we might want to run it in a menu bar below the logo so if we go back to our skin section again so appearance theme settings and it defaults to the skin. We can get an idea of some of the options we have by looking at the skins. So, you know, as you as you can see right now, the default position for the navigation in this theme we've got selected is in the right hand side. But if we went over to this theme over here, you can see that it defaults to being uh, below the, the logo. If uh, if we go to look some other themes down here, you can see if we wanted the dark background or dark dark header, we could choose one of these you know four themes down at the bottom here. If we want our whole website to be dark, then we could choose one of these two. But in this case, we're going to keep it light, and we're going to do some modifications just to show you what you can do with the header section. Okay, so let's uh, keep it on that one. Let's go to our uh, design section up here. Okay, one of the things we can do is change our uh, background okay so we can change the background color and we can also change the top bar color so ignore all the other options up here we're going to go cover those in later videos but what we want to do is get back down to the top bar uh, background now you'll see that there's a top bar option here if it's not available on yours then you need to go to top bar and select it if, if it's on none for example like that let me just save that when you come to the design aspect, you'll see that that top bar is not an option here because we've we've eliminated it from the design. And if we actually go back to our front page and refresh that, you'll see it disappears from the actual uh, from the actual design completely. So there's the first option we can eliminate or include the top bar. Now, if we do include it, let's go back to our uh, top bar settings here we would select either one column, in which case, uh, if I put some text in here, uh, call, I don't know, 1-100-123-4567, there we go. If I put some text in there and just save that, because we've selected one column, it will actually display in the center. So let's go up here and refresh that taking a little while to refresh that. There you go. As you can see, so it's it's one column, so it's from side to side, and it centers it in the middle of that column. So that's a phone number. You can put any text you want in there. You can even put links that uh, people can click on, but uh, that shows you where you can put text into the top bar. So if we go back here, um, if I change that to two columns, 
what it's going to do is going to give me an option for a second column. Now, let's just leave it with the menu setting for now and show you what happens. Okay, so I'm going to go over to the front page here again, refresh. You're going to see that the, the text we just typed in goes over to the left side here, and the menu goes over to the right. Now, if I go in there and just put some text, I can do the same thing. I'll just copy that just for the sake of the speed in this video. Put that in there, save the settings come back refresh that front page and we'll notice that we have two sets of text in there there we go okay so that's uh, how we can get text in there we can also add as you can see by the settings we can add another menu in there okay so because we don't have a menu in there right now it's just gonna say choose a menu when we save this and we refresh that game so there we go. If we choose a menu, if we actually choose that primary menu that we have, or that main menu, if I go in here and click this, and we choose uh, to put that in the top bar as well as the header section, you'll see that menu appear. So let's just go back and have a look at that. And there you go. You can see now you've got a menu up there. So that's pretty handy if you need to have more than just the, uh, the one menu down here. Okay. Obviously, if you move that into this side, that menu will be above uh, this menu okay so that's the top bar regarding the one column or two columns now you also have the option in design to change the color of that so here you go you can see that the top bar is set to the same as content and the content is white right now as you can see um, but if we want to actually create a color with that and um, we can do that here so right now it's a gray if we do a custom color on that we're going to save that, uh, save the settings. Sorry, I'm scrolling too, a little bit too much there. And we'll go up here and click on F5 to refresh it. There you go. You can see that uh, I added the gradient and the gray and adds a nice little bar up there. But let's say, for example, we want to get that blue color. So how do we know that blue color? It is actually an accent color, so we can copy the values from there. But I'm going to show you a neat little trick. You can download an extension for uh, Chrome or Firefox, and it's called Colorzilla. And it's this little uh, icon up here. Now, if I click on that and choose the, the color picker, I can actually hover over any area. As you can see, I can get the black from here or, you know, I can get the gray from there. And you can see that the color's changing up here. So if I just want to get that blue, I'm going to click on that. Now it's actually copied to the clipboard. So if I go into my settings here, scroll down to top bar. Okay. Go into this box. If I double click this number here we can actually paste the number we just collected and there we go I'm gonna save that and if we go up to our front page again refresh that we're gonna have a nice blue text up there now you'll notice that um, something really smart about the beaver builder um, theme here is that because we've got a dark color the text automatically changes to a lighter color which is pretty cool so Right now, we're going to leave the blue bar at the top there, the same as that. I have got a gradient on it. You can remove the gradient. If you just want to have a look what it looks like without the gradient, we'll just scroll down to the uh, top bar. We'll remove the gradient. So it becomes a flat. It'll be a flat blue. Um, so what we'll do is F5 that, refresh it. There we go. It's more of a flat color like that. You know what? We'll leave it flat for now. So that's your, that's your top bar area. Um, so next step would be to come down to the, the actual main header area. So that we've got a white background, we've obviously got some text, and we've got a menu, and we've got a magnifying glass. So if we click on the magnifying glass, it basically opens up the search box, okay? And so we're going to go down and look at the settings on the header right now. So let's um, come down to the, first of all, in our design settings, we can change some of the header, th um, header things like um, background color, for example. Uh, as you can see, it's set right now to the same color as the content, which we know is white. But if I wanted to change this to a custom color, and first of all, I can make it to all blue, so it would be the same color. I'm just going to double click this, and I still have the other color in the in the um, mem memory there. So I should have it on my clipboard. Control V. There we go. And do that. We're going to have our main background of our header the same color 
first of all as the font so this probably will disappear let's just have a look no oh, okay so we've got a bit of smart code in there that's decided to change this around which is pretty cool well done beaver guys uh, beaver beaver builder guys so sort of changing that so it goes to a light background got a bit of smarts there and um, as you can see now we've got a completely blue header with the with the top bar and the header background blue okay so what about if we wanted to um, put a logo in here instead of the text? So let's just go down to design again, okay? And I'm gonna reset the, the header background to white, just because I think that's, uh, we can click on non, and we'll save the settings there. Okay, let's just go back there and refresh that so we end up with a nice white background actually it's not a white background what it does it inherits it's actually a transparent background when you click on non it goes transparent so because the body of this page is this gray silver color it's actually defaulted so I want to go back in there and just change that to the same as the content background so the content background is white and I'm going to go to the header background I'm going to do same as content okay I'm not going to put a gradient in there we're going to save the settings and once again, if I come back here, I'm going to have a white background now. So the three options you have for the background color are, you know, obviously the same as the content color, which is white. If this was content area was gray, then this would be gray. And um, you have non, which is essentially transparent. So that will then let you um, go right through to the background, which is, could be handy if we we're going to use a image as a background. And then the third option is the custom color, so you can choose which color you want. Okay, so let's go and have a look at this um, this header or this uh, logo text now, shall we? Okay, so in our um, in our header section, um, it's not here; it's in in the header section. We have an option to choose a text logo or an image logo. Currently, it's set to text, as you can see. It says demo area. Now, if you want to change the if you want to change the um, font, you've got all the, the Google fonts in here. So if you wanted to change that particular logo text into, I don't know, um, let's go with Bigelow rules. I have no idea what that looks like, but um, let's have a look, save that and see what it looks like. You can actually be quite creative with the logo text because of all the fonts available to you. There we go. Look at that. Wow. Uh, and if you can... If you can use a font that, especially if you're going to use one that you're going to use elsewhere in your, your website, it will save load time by using a font as opposed to using a graphic logo. So if you're going to use a, a font elsewhere in, in the, the whole theme, then it might be an idea to, to use that for a logo. If you're not going to use it elsewhere, then there really isn't much difference between uh, using a graphical logo or using a Google font because the Google font files have to be loaded just to be able to display that logo up there and nothing else. So it's kind of a it's kind of a waste just to do uh, the logo. But in some cases, it's it's the easy way to do it. So what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how to create a lo an actual graphical logo. So essentially, we go in here and we choose image. OK, under the type. Now, I actually up uploaded this before, so I'm going to show you what the procedure is. Um, if you select, um, you would see this if you select image. So select photo. It's going to open up the media gallery, and you will upload a file. I'm going to select that one. Okay, and we were going to save the settings right there. So what that does is if we refresh, we're going to lose that text logo. Now we've got an actual image logo. Okay, so that's the logo taken care of. The header will expand to take into account your logo. And if you need to narrow this space above and below the logo, uh, I'm going to show you how to do that in a later video. There's actually no way in the theme to do it. You're going to have to use some custom CSS, but it really is quite easy to do. All right. And don't get worried about using custom CSS. When you know how to a, a few tricks that I can show you, it will be very easy. So we've got our logo sorted out now. Um, one thing we want to do is look at this menu option. So we've got our navigation over here on the right but we might want to put it below. You know what, let's go and do that, shall we? As you can see, within the header section, over here in the, in the Beaver Build Themes settings, I've got another option down here, which is the um, position of the menu. Right now it's set to right, and I've also got that search icon enabled. I can disable that search icon really quickly by just 
changing that to disabled, save the settings. And if I move over here, you uh, refresh the screen, you'll notice that the magnifying glass disappears. So now we've just got the menu. OK, so next thing we'll do is we'll go in and change this. I'm going to show you all the options. First of all, I'm going to show you the bottom option. OK, and what we'll do is we'll leave the content area for now. We'll just save it with the bottom options. Now if we go to our front page and refresh that again, we're going to notice that this is along the bottom. There we go. But what also happens now is you need to change the colors of that because obviously that white background is pretty boring. So if we wanted to match the color up here, I could use that that uh, colorzilla again. OK, it's already there selected to that. But if I use that, I'll just select it from the top here, as you can see, it's, it's copied to the clipboard and I'll go back to my designs options. OK, and you'll notice that we will have a navigation bar here now. A menu background here it is uh, because we've got that bar instead of it being in the right hand corner so if I actually go to custom color okay and type click on this and I'll go and paste that value into there okay and save that we'll go back to our, our front page again and we'll refresh that and you'll notice that we've got a blue bar at the there we go. And it's pretty flat looking. We've got the same same flatness as above. But uh, also you notice that the the text has also been changed to a lighter color to offset the dark background. Uh, so that's the, how to change the color. You can change it to any color you want. OK, but um, the bottom setting for the menu is actually set to the left. So everything aligns to the left. So we've got the logo to the left. We've got the We've got the menu to the left. Now, if we go back into our header section again and we choose um, our centered position, OK, and we'll save that setting there. OK, what we get is everything lined up. So I'm going to refresh this now and everything lined up in the center. You see, very, very simple. OK, but I'm going to put it back to the left position because I want to show you what the other options were on the left. So I'm going to move it back to the bottom. OK, now you'll notice that when you move it to bottom, you get this content layout section over here available to you. Now, what this is, is the area where the menu was before in the right position now becomes a uh, area you can put uh, text. So if we choose text, we've got the phone number in there again, save settings. We come back to our home page here. First of all, the logo is going to move to the left. The menu is going to move to the left. And over here, we're going to have the text that we've uh, got in that box. And it happens to be the phone number. So watch as I do a refresh here. So F5. There we go. There's the there's the text that we had in that uh, that option. Now, I could also put another um, I could also put social icons in there and text and social icons. So let's just show you how to do social icons quickly. OK, I'm going to press save settings on that. OK, if I come back here, you're going to go, OK, refresh. Oh, what happened to the social icons? There are none there. OK, so <laughs> that's going to catch a lot of people aware. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back into our menu. We're going to choose social. What you have to do to get the get the icons to appear is to put some links in here. So you'd have to put your face, a link to your Facebook page. For the sake of simplicity and design, what we're going to do, we're going to use a web design trick here. And we're going to basically put an anchor tag in. So a hashtag. And this is what it's going to do is just basically allow um, the icon to appear because it thinks that it's got a link in the box. So we're going to add Facebook. We're going to add Twitter. We're going to add Google+. Plus. Um, what else have we got here? Well, maybe YouTube. OK. And you know what? We could, you should have an RSS in there as well so that people can actually subscribe to your blog articles. Let's just leave it at those five for now. I'm going to save the settings. You notice I changed it to branded up there. You'll see why in a second. And I'm going to go back to our home page and press F5. And there are my logos, my social logos. OK, uh, now if I go back to the, 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 the social options and change those to monochrome, save the settings again. We're going to get the non-color versions of them, OK? But notice it picks up the accent color. So we're, we're on the, the blue. So if we change the accent color in our, of our theme, those um, would also change. Now, let's just say we want to have our phone number in there as well. If we go back to our header section 
and scroll down to our content layout and we can do text as well as social so there we go we've got our phone number setting there save the settings again and we'll come back up here click on refresh and there we go as you can see um, we have now got a phone number above the icons. Now there's one setting left in the heading that I didn't cover before, and this is the fixed header. Now what I'm gonna actually have to do is I'm gonna have to, first of all, um, create some content more than what we have to be able to scroll the page. So excuse me while I just go and do this quickly. I'm gonna create one page on, on the, the about page, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna paste a whole bunch of um, text in here so for example I've got some shortcuts uh, programmed into my uh, my my shortcut browser here so I'm just going to select all that and copy it and just I just want a reason to be able to scroll the page and I need to add some content to do that so uh, you know what uh, let's do that and let's just add an image at the top here so it will make it guarantee it will go down so add media this is the image that you get installed by default if you go with a SiteGround uh, hosting package. It's set to um, non-alignment right now, left. Uh, so you know what? Um, that text is going to scroll over that side. Actually, you don't even need to do that. It's aligned there. So we're going to update that. And I'm going to go back to my homepage, click on the About, and we're going to actually get some title. There we go. So now I can actually scroll the page. You're going to get to see what the option is under the header, so appearance theme settings, go back to the header again. This option here, the fixed header. Um, first of all, I'm going to take it off, disable it, save settings, and I'm gonna show you what happens. So we're going back to our front page here, press F5 to refresh that. Now I want you to watch this menu, this uh, navigation menu area here, okay? As I scroll, it goes off the screen. As you can see, that's the typical behavior of a, uh, a website in the past. But you'll probably notice that a lot of websites now have this theme that the menu sticks to the top as you scroll. And that's what this uh, fixed header does. So if I enable that, save my settings again, come back to the front page, press F5 to refresh it. Watch the uh, menu bar now as I scroll up. It actually comes down and replaces it with a sticky menu. Also, your logo comes in there. That's pretty neat, eh? So that's uh, that's what happens with the with the sticky or the fixed head. So that's an option that's on as default. If you don't like it, then you can simply turn that off and scroll back there. So that's how we get our header all sorted. I'm sure you can create something much better than what I've done, but um, that's a lesson for today. And uh, I look forward to seeing you in part three, where we'll start going over some of the other options in the content areas and the footer areas. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope you had fun. Thanks. Bye now.